You know what people do? Which direction do you like the best? Let's do this direction so I'm not backlit. Good, good, good. Have a little sip of coffee here. Just a regular journal entry, like I always do. Now, if a two-legged comes along, it'll be a different story, but... Most people... And I have the viewer at a disadvantage in the sense when I talk about most people, there are things that are very easy to say. But let's not dismiss them because they're easy to say, because I, I propose to discuss them in a respectful manner. And that is, it's very easy to say, but it doesn't uh, negate the value of saying so, that it is so easy to say so. Um, it's also kind of hopeless to say so. And that is that most people live with a lot of hostility buried in them, and a lot of stress. And no matter what people do or how hard they work, and again, I, I have to view it an advantage, but let's look at this. Most, no matter how hard people work, they enter periods of great stress and loneliness in their life. They become left alone again and again and again. Now, I work with this. I work with this as a satanic high priest, as a self-taught medicine type of person. Uh, not something that I really say very boldly at all because, I mean, it's sort of preposterous to call yourself a medicine person if you can't heal anything, and I can't. So I'm a medicine person who honestly says, I have no fucking power to change anything. I can't even solve my own problems, but I do work on medicine. So that puts us on an equal footing, even though I may have the viewer at a disadvantage and that I, I talk the way I like to talk and I use words with the power that I've accumulated because it's of particular use to me, when the only person I have to think about essentially is myself and what I would consider any prospective uh, listener who finds what I have to say interesting, which I have no definite uh, confidence that I should do. This is the way that I make my videos, and that's it. Now, most people live with enormous amounts of hostility buried in the system. They're likely to encounter periods even years of great loneliness and distress in their lives, no matter what life they live or who they are or how hard they work or how much money they have or what race they are, sex they are, no matter when they've been born in history, whatever kind of privilege, whatever they believe, whatever their religion is, whatever their purity, whatever their luck, whatever their fortune or misfortune, this happens to be a fairly predictable part of the entire career of every human life. And in making a video like this, I say, look at me, I'm alone. I go through massive changes. I have anger. So I'm kind of like a lot of people. Who aren't here right now necessarily, but they live, they live in my memory. They live in the impressions I've formed of them. They live in my emotions. They live in my trauma. It all speaks, and everything that speaks to me speaks of people who are very frustrated. And I think that people are usually only that frustrated when they've been exposed to a situation they couldn't control and have no hope of understanding. And by the time they're even making what they consider decisions about what to do and how to deal with that distress, many of those decisions have already been made on their behalf, both by the catastrophic effects in their brain function that of those around them, and by the society as a whole, subsequent to which it is fucking miraculous that anyone manages to enjoy their life and be an honest person, even remotely. Because this creates an environment where lying springs eternal. We put that shit on everything, and when the brain, Virginia Satir is a, a psychologist who put it very succinctly, that when the brain is repressed, it essentially has to lie. And the roles that it play, that it plays, and various group members will play across any group in the world, put any group of people together, will invariably, by their very nature, exert a corrupting influence over the well-being of any number of people present or not present in that group. 
all try to deal with something in a way that, while perfectly natural to the brain, is the poorest possible strategy, strategy for restoring and preserving peace in any group dynamic in the world. There's only one other thing you can do, and it's not a solution, is recognize the situation you're in. Most people are scattered into a dory on a massive ocean. They're stuck. They don't know what to do, and they start imagining ways that they can control their life and make themselves feel better. We don't give children enough love, which they hunger for. They hunger for control. And it's not always obvious that somebody hungers for control. It's not even obvious to them. Most people who commit even the greatest violence, and especially, especially the greatest violence in the world, have no idea why they're doing what they're doing. And should have no trouble justifying it. In fact, it is justified. People who commit violence have no control over themselves. And while it is great to exhort one another to exercise some self-restraint, we nonetheless subject everyone, just by how we live, to conditions that must necessarily remove and evidently remove their ability to control just about any part of their lives. Subsequent to which, you can't blame anyone for fucking losing their shit. Then what you get is a volatile world. People say, oh, look at the crime. We've got to build bigger walls. We've got to have more security. We've got to make more money and get safer. But you're not dealing with the essential issue that subsequent to this kind of trauma, most of which most people don't consider their own, even though it is. Everything that people do is predicated of ignoring and so subverting anything like a genuine restorative process that would commend us, however difficulty, difficultly, to the situation we're actually in. It's the only way to maintain attention, to be attentive enough is to be attentive to something. Say you look at life and say you're scared. Say you're alone. <coughs> is it necessarily in your interest to ignore the fact that you feel alone? If a train is coming, is it in your interest to ignore that? These are tracks upon which no train shall come. Tracks upon which no train has run in a number of years. But if a train does come along, you can be sure I'll hear it. And if I don't hear it, I'll see it. It must have been something to behold. You know, all the times I've walked on these tracks, which I consider the road to my motherland, religiously speaking, and sometimes you can even hear the cows from here, who I consider my ancestors. I've never imagined the train actually passing through here because I've never seen it. How much steel rumbled through this space? How many conductors mumbled to their co-workers while they were rolling through here? Rolling through the pages of a story that was yet to be written. You now the quick objection to my work or to my line of thought, which occupies most of the days of my life, is, am I making too much out of it? Am I focusing on the wrong things? Is my hypothesis poorly articulated or conceived? Is what I call the brute injustice of the world, just a part of life? Are the, is it the evident distress of my fellow man as I account for it? Is it a sign of injustice? Or is it a sign that people just don't, aren't just good people, or they, they don't behave well, or they make bad decisions? And that's the only thing we should... You see, quite a, if you were to take this argument to anyone you know, how quickly it would be dissolved and disarmed of any of its potency. And if you did that as an experiment, you would see how impotent people need to be. They don't know what to do with potent ideas. 
they've never thought and never had occasion to think and have never been encouraged to think that the worst parts of the world that they could lay their eyes upon contain in them the seeds of any world worth living in. Voices that need to be heard and no one in any school in the world is training to listen to them. Quite the opposite. And that's how extensive the cult psychology has become. Another hypothesis, which goes with the first one, which can be summarized, I suppose, as people are in too much distress, don't know what to do about it, and that distress is being enraged and inflamed by everything that anyone thinks anyone is doing about it. Most of which tacitly concedes to the necessity for the existence of suffering, as though in some sense it is our fault, it is our nature, it is the nature of life. Some people are unfortunate, some people are unlucky, there are just always poor people. And they don't live their lives with any thought that anyone should have any better idea as to the nature and extent of all the distress in the world than it just simply exists. And you're lucky if it didn't come to your door today. Keep working, work harder, come together, be positive. And here I'm referring to, I'm a man on a video. Is this still running? Oh, excuse me. I don't know if I... Oh, yeah, it looks like it's running. Um, I'm doing this on a camera in a particular society that someone could look at now, 100 years from now, and say... I think he's questioning a dominant cult. He's actually slowly walking up to a cult whose facade exists even in front of this camera, whose facade and whose culture and his training this man has been immersed in his whole life. Immersed in a cult my whole life. The cult of the world. This is a man who isn't having a nervous breakdown. He's actually spent a lot of time exercising his critical faculty and not working. Not engaging in fraudulent fits of mass hysteria because that's what working is. It's a it's a way of communicating mass hysteria and delusion. We're not going to go into all that today. And yeah, I know it's necessary. I know it's integral. I know that people would die if people didn't all go to work today. So there, I, I agree to the dependency. Whether that is to be ascribed to nature, perfectly speaking, or to the conditioning of a pseudo-natural cult, going back thousands of years, that's up for discussion. Now, I can discuss that. I'm happy to discuss that. Can you discuss that? Can the cult that I walk up to discuss that? Is anyone of any description prepared to discuss that with me? It seems hardly worth the discussion, doesn't it? Is that part of our training, or is that logical? So this man stands here and makes some hypotheses about how much distress there is, how evident our inability to do anything but direct it, it means that promote not just that distress, but ever more aggressive sublimation of it, the better to continue, continue with what is largely deemed, and here's a sacred word, progress. Are you making progress? Have we made progress today? Am I making progress? Is this progressive? Is it regressive? Is it stupid? Is it incoherent? Careful now, because you want to be careful what you say about your own mind. Turnaround is fair play. If it somehow necessary follows from the viewer's point of view that I am insane, it may as well necessary fo necessarily follow that you are. And at that point, the only way to exert the dominance of your argument is to make mine better than I ever could. Now, I've done this thousands of times, so let's just dispense with wasting our time with that. And this way, I hope to keep the attention of some people.
by proving my willingness to be reasonable and fair. I watched my grandfather die. I watched my grandfather, my venerable grandfather, who is a happy, smiling man now, is a happy, smiling man, a great, nice, wonderful man, great intelligence. And he is with me now. I'm standing with my great grandfather who withered away from stomach cancer because what most people call a fossil fuel has been converted into a means to poison people starting with our farmers, which is what my grandfather was and maybe is in a way. He'll always be a farmer to me. I love my grandfather. I look up to my grandfather. I take a good deal from my grandfather. My grandfather was a maverick. He'd seen enough in life to know that people were mostly full of shit. And so he did what he wanted to do as much as he could. He didn't love my grandmother that much anymore. At least they weren't demonstrative. You see, when people lose their minds, you ever wondered where the minds go? Perhaps it goes into producing the types of religious stories that are necessary to make us pay for crude oil or for cars we've already paid for to pit a family between itself and answering the demands of a society that crams its propaganda into every interstitial space in the world. Subsequent to which it all seems, it's all anyone seems to want to do is to fill the space with enough of a kind of vaporous gas produced by a narcissistic mind so that everyone has to face the truth, but no one can ever think about it. And so, the truth can be used against everyone, every day. Every day is filled with truth. The greatest violence is the greatest truth. But what can you do with it? And yet the truth gets greater, because it gets more violent every day, doesn't it? Perhaps you find me violent. Perhaps I'm too violent in my aptitudes and beliefs. Perhaps I speak too much of the violence done to me. Perhaps I don't hide it well enough. Perhaps many things. How valuable am I? Do I sound confident? Do I sound anxious? What does my body language reveal? Who do I think I'm talking to? Is my voice to be discounted? For the absolute la lack of confidence that I myself possess, that this theatrical presentation of sorts should bear across any span of time a significance that should be worth anyone's time in a hundred years. So occupied are people with so many more important things. But I don't just write about psychology, I do psychology. I have to perform psychology all day long. I'm doing it all day when I'm making these videos, when I'm walking. I'm interacting with my entire psychic sphere. I live with it. It's nothing. It's something. I live with that. My psychic hemisphere. All of this. And I learned so much. So much I've never had the time to learn, but always wanted to learn about my own body, about what sex means to me, because most women don't care about how I feel. <laughs> I say that with a note of resentment and growing horror, only just beginning to grow. How little equipped every woman I've ever met has been to show the least bit of demonstrable regard in my emotional being as a person and a man. And that speaks volumes, and it also tries really hard to make you not listen to it. You can talk about misogyny all you want. Then it seems everyone's ears perk up. Bing, bing, bing. We've got the signal. 
listen to the mothership. Misogyny. It's everywhere. It's under this leaf. It's under this stone. Look, it's coming at you. To the point where I call it now female misogyny because misandry has absolutely no effect upon the mind, which is the technical term that means a hatred of men by women, which is prevalent. And I've felt a lot of hatred towards women in my life too, so back at you. At least I'm conscious of it. You want to talk about unconscious bias of women, of men. Now, I will do you a better turn than you would do me and say, I'm fascinated by the hatred of men. One, because it reveals absolutely that men have been absolutely fucking impossibly, crudely, and crazily violent to their daughters. My grandfather can attest to that. And he apologized to my mother for it before he died. Even though he had no fucking control over himself or any part of his life. Post World War II, chemicals, five, six, seven children. He's done everything he's supposed to do his whole life. He's a Christian Mennonite man. He's not getting much from the wife in any direction. No one around him is nearly as smart as he is. But it's broken him already. Like life has broken me in many ways. I've got the brakes to prove it. Oh, it's broken me, all right. People think they don't break because they're still alive. <laughs> but a little part of our heart breaks all the time when you're looking at the suffering of the world. Your heart breaks. I talked to a, a nurse in training. And she said to me that a, a hospital emergency center is a place of no shame and no dignity. That's about 10 minutes, I think so. That a hospital is a place of no shame, just checking for two-legged, and no dignity. So that means it's not a therapeutic space. And it's never meant to be. So a hospital is not a place, by her own admission, where you can go to become healthy. Not even to begin to become healthy. Maybe a tiny fraction of pre-beginningness to becoming healthy. I've never felt like a hospital was necessarily a place where I could be healthy. That I'm going to encounter health. It's not a health industry. It's just another industry that hurts people. And I'll give you some evidence of that hurt right now. Just using words, magical words. I'll give you evidence of how disgusting the whole medical system is. Just with my words, and it'll become starkly evident to you. So prepare yourself, you've been duly warned. That so few people are capable of scrutinizing what is exactly healthy about the medical system. subsequent to our doctors being the number one cause of death in the world. And I have seen recent examples of that. But as with the, the women's hatred of men, I'm willing to do the courtesy of recognizing something else about this horrifying statistic. And that is that this requires all of us to be conditioned so much that we should take no little education from what people can be trained to do with impunity. Because wouldn't you say that if you're capable of killing someone with impunity in the name of your industry, and it happens, it's happening now every day, psychiatrically and medically. That puts you in a pretty risky position, doesn't it? I'm going to assume that most people don't like the idea of killing someone. Knowingly, 
Does that mean that we don't like doing it unknowingly? What do we like about defending that behavior by saying doctors are just doing the best they can? Or they're just victims of the system too? Because they don't actually look into what their prescriptions are doing to their patients. And if they don't know that they are not in a position or in receipt of the most useful and comprehensive information about disease pathology, if they never have the time to pursue it in any case, do they even want to find more information? If they can be said to stem the tide of human sacrifice, can we? by refusing to participate in these codependent cults. Can you live without actually depending on the medical system as much as you've learned to depend on them? In faith, in mind, in heart and body. Wheel me in, do your best. I'm willing to take the risk. And believe you me, I've spoken to people whose family members have had several organs of their body removed for absolutely no reason and to ill effect entirely. Organ harvesting is going strong. It's a very strong industry. It happens, as like many things happen, because the incredible truth washing over us that people like to think is God loves you and everything's wonderful, the incredible totality of the torrents of life and truth rushing through us, which have never been able to truly hide anything, tend to overwhelm our minds. It's too much to take, entirely. It's always been too much. That's my point. It's just all too much. People's minds shut down. They do worse than that. They do better than that. They change their function and become more capable in all kinds of useful ways that include the advance of propensities that go beyond all scrutiny and yet exert an enormous influence over every area of human communication. That's part of the truth every day. People say, oh, it's this conspiracy, or we got to do this, or that's bad, blah, 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 blah. But it's primarily just so fucking hard on our hearts to consider what's happened religiously to our entire planet. That we are squandering so much of our physical, mental, and emotional industry and giving every so much evidence of that by the preposterous kinds of faith and its ability to interrupt our critical reasoning faculties, which should not be mutually exclusive to any kind of emotional attachments we may have, That's hard to deal with. I live with that every day. I'm going to live with it today. I'm living with it now. And all the loving truth coming over the world is, is helping me live with that. The birds sound nice. But if you were watching this movie, the movie called My Life, you'd still be sitting in your seat 25 years later and saying, where is this, where is this guy's friends? Where is his family? Why? I think this choosing to be socially isolated business, I think that is probably the more prominent component. And I got that a lot in my early 20s as I started to question all kinds of religions and the codependency around me, which had already led to extraordinary violence that changed my life and from which I had to learn on a therapeutic level, you know, uh, if I was going to, you know, stay alive. And my life has been threatened, even up to a year ago, when you get, when you deal with violence and all kinds of injuries and dealing with the world with all those injuries, dealing with the world with such an incredibly truthful acquaintance with the world and how it actually operates um, is so incredibly shocking that most people don't live through it. 
there's all different kinds of ways that they'll die, but basically what they died of was that they were just too shocked by the world. In fact, that's most people. And to die for them is a blessing beyond compare. This world has been made so torturous for people. With such little true satisfaction and peace and happiness. Which happens here, not on a busy fucking roadway. Right? Give your head a shake if you think it happens in a downtown of any city in the world. There's peace there. There's no peace there. Right? Let me come to your fucking sanctuary and fucking run a lawnmower all day long. You tell me how peaceful that is. People just get used to it. They find a little refuge here, a little refuge there. They stick their headphones in. It's all these, all these props. I haven't listened to popular recorded music in like 20 years. <laughs> Not willingly. I saw something on YouTube or some guy was interviewing or something on TV that was interviewing a, an old rap artist called 50 Cent or something. And it dawned on me that I was at least peripherally aware that this is probably one of the more popular artists in the world, or was. And I didn't care. And it meant nothing to me. At all. Never heard it, don't want to hear it, never going to look it up. You want to publish a book of the, the incredible lyrics that this person wrote, I, I will take a look at it. It didn't help my family. I don't give a fuck. I, I give a fuck about things I can actually use. I can get peace without fucking buying anyone's album. I quite frankly don't want to hear people's music. I don't want to talk to most people. And I probably wouldn't want to know what's on their minds. I, it's already so evident to me what's on people's minds. It's already so evident to me what they love and what they hate. Starting with happiness and hating pain. We start with that, and then it goes out and it forms this neural, neuro-linguistic map all over the world that seems to include mass human suffering. Now, tell me if you've traced the genealogy of mass human sacrifice. I haven't done it yet. Right? I'm not, you know what I mean? I think, it's, I think it's a job that needs to be done. In as much as we retain any actual substance when we say we like to do things that make us safer. Right? Mass violence, bad. Not knowing about it, bad. Needing to listen to it precisely because it is so easy not to when confronted with the enormity of its instruments and indeed their ability to mobilize that of every family in the world to such incredible cost for so long pitting a family against the world and against itself because it can't satisfy both and allowing it, permitting it and suffering from it because we don't know how to change it so critical branches of brain development just don't happen because a kind of psychological anthrax is spread on it. There's too many things that are happening because the system registers overwhelm, overwhelmed, changes, overwhelmed, changes, 